character you bring end up bringing over with you in Noah, and just what what was it that obviously the relationship you already had, you coached him last year, but what does he add to your room? What does he bring to your room? Um, Noah is just a hardworking kid that um, that I had at um, the other school, WKU. Um, extremely talented. Um, takes on the same mindset I have. Just a kid that comes to work, as Coach Landon said, a, a lunch pair work, comes to work and works hard. And um, that's what I saw in the kid, his passion for the game. Um, he's, he's truly passionate about the game, details. He wants, he wants to be great. And so that's what I, I, I saw when I first got there um, in Bowling Green, when I saw the kid. Uh, this kid is extremely talented. And um, I'm, I'm blessed to have him here and thankful that he you know, wanted to come here so I can continue to work with him. What has stood out about your guys so far, particularly after Saturday? It sounded like at least three of your guys scored touchdowns on Saturday. So just what, what stood out about your group so far? Um, they all bring different um, skill sets. Um, Byron's a great um, guy in space, catching the ball. Um, Sean, Sean Dollars, I'm proud of him. He has, he has gotten better, taken to my coaching because I'm more of a military-style type of coach. You know, I don't use profanity with my kids. If you ever come out there, they'll tell you, but I get in them. So I'm, I'm, I'm proud of him on taking on the discipline aspect of things and realize that I run my room. But I'm so proud of him and, and his development, how he's, how he's gotten better. He, he, can do, he can do it all. He can run between tackles, catch the ball, give him the space instead of getting better. Um, Noah Whittington is Noah Whittington. If y'all been out there, you got a chance to see him, hard running kid. He can catch the ball, plays good without the ball. But all three together, um, we, we'll have something special with those three. A couple of months ago, we got to see a video of uh, Dan Landing FaceTiming you with uh, some of your former players, you know, talking to you about the job and stuff. What kind of experience was that for you, just seeing your guys, seeing this new coach connect with your guys like that? Uh, well, anybody that knows me knows that those five guys from Memphis, um, they mean a lot to me, just outside of the football, because I wasn't a running back coach there, per se, but I always carried myself as that. I didn't care what my title said. I know I'm here to serve these kids, and I, I still live by that. So those five guys mean a lot to me and, and the other running backs that I had, and I pour into, pour into their life. So that was special to have them guys on that call, and those guys wanted to be on that call. And um, they, they know the journey that I had to get into this profession. And, but I, for the past three, four years, those guys get a text from me every morning because it's about the relationship with these kids. I tell kids all the time, the football aspect for me, that's second. I'm really in this to, to pour into these kids because the only thing they learn from me is how to run power, counter, and pass block. I don't fail them, I don't fail myself, and I don't fail their parents. So I pour into these kids. That's, that's what's important to me. How much fun has it been to watch those guys go on and have such success, such success at the NFL level? I mean, it's been fun. I mean, they don't like getting phone calls from me sometimes, like when they put the ball on the ground or they got the ball in the, in the wrong spot and they, and they know they better answer the first time I call. They'll tell you that um, they never call me Coach Locke. Those five guys, they call me Coach Meatball. So they know when I call, and they, they, I will hear Darren Henderson, Tony Pollard, or Gibson, or Gainwell, or Patrick Taylor, Meatball, what I do wrong. But I, I, love, I love those guys because, like I said, I really wouldn't be standing here if it weren't for those five guys. I wouldn't be standing here if it wasn't for Dan Landon or Kenny, uh, Kenny Dillingham or Joe Lawrence. If it wasn't for Dr. Sherman Morris, these guys I'm naming that was there in Memphis. No, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't be standing here if it wasn't for uh, 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 Josh Storms. I most definitely wouldn't be standing here if it weren't for Mike Novell. So those relationships mean everything to me. Tell us a little bit more about your background, Carlos. I mean, you no, know, obviously you're a high school coach in Memphis as well, but I hearing also that you were in law enforcement prior to that. So just tell us a little bit about how did you get into even Memphis high school coaching? Now I was a ball player myself, you know, and I had an injury. I went to, you no, know, I was an undrafted free agent with the Giants. Got up there and um, I had an injury, and I ended up, you know, getting out of football. I played arena football for a while, and I was done with football. And I went in law enforcement. I've been a correctional officer. Um, I've been a police officer, and I did some special detail work for the, the government. And um, once I um, got in doing that, I wanted to give back to the community. And I never look at myself as a college coach. I represent the high school coaches of Memphis, Tennessee. That's, I represent those guys because it's going to be somebody to come after me, so it's important that I, that I succeed. So I got into coaching high school football there in the great city of Memphis. I did that for eight years helping building up um, coaches' programs, running the offense, instilling um, discipline into their weight room programs. And um, I got the bright idea, and I told my wife, I said, this is what God want me to do. I want to coach football. So I got the bright idea. I walked over there to Memphis, 
and literally just started coaching and pouring into young men. So that's why I deter everybody, what's the walk on coach? I literally walked into this profession. I still worked my job 12, 14 hours at nighttime, and I showed up at every meeting. I was sleeping in my car in the parking lot, show up at every meeting, one late, go home, sleep for a little while. I did that for two years. Then Mike Novell made me the director of high school relations. I did that for, for a year. Then he took me to Florida State as a director of high school relations. Then I got the job at Western Kentucky and stayed there last year for a little while. Then I had to, I had to interview him. They interviewed me. Kenny didn't have him interview me. They weren't going to give me anything. And I didn't want to be given anything. Because I still, I still approach this job every day with a walk-on mentality. Ain't nobody going to give me nothing. So I don't give my guys anything. I still work like I'm the guy who's showing up at Memphis every day, sleeping in my car, changing the bathroom, in hopes of just getting a locker and another shirt. And that's the approach I take every day. And it rolls up on my player. I ain't giving you nothing. You're going to work for everything. And that job you had at the time was a, as a high school coach, and you were doing from the high school side to the? The high school part, I was a volunteer coach, like a neighborhood coach. I didn't work in the high schools. I just showed up every day. And I didn't show up at 3 o'clock. I came up there to school at 11 or 12 because I wanted to see if my guys were sitting in the first row. When teachers started having problems out of the kids, they weren't calling the football coach. They called me. And I'd get up out of my bed and go up there and see about my kids because that was important to me. We all should be in this business to serve these young men, and that's what I'm here for. And one of the one of the law one of the one of the law enforcement details you got was SWAT, right? Yeah, some aspect of that of that I carried a, I carried a, a rifle for for a little while. So um, that working that job taught me a, taught me a lot. It taught me discipline. It taught me just um, how to be a, a a good teammate. Like I said, I'm here to serve Coach Land. I'm here to serve his kids, Coach Dillingham. Every coach I'm around I'm here to serve them to make sure they achieve their goals and dreams. Because for me, man, a lot of people say I'm supposed to be here. So I take I take that approach every day. I'm I'm ultra competitive. So to the on the field part, how do you go about marrying what you were just doing at Western Kentucky, which was the leading passing attack in the country, with a HUNH concept, which is I'm gonna say purely run. It's not. There's plenty of passing involved, mm -hmm. but. There's a lot of running. There's a lot more running, certainly, than when you were doing it just Western last year. So. I mean, we, we ran the ball at Western. We had the, had the numbers. You know, mm -hmm. Zach Keatley, who is now the OC at, at um, Texas Tech, we ran the ball and we had the numbers. But it taught, taught me a lot about the pass the game, pass protection. Um, I was able to get you know even better at that. And the running game part for me, that was the easy part. So come here and being back in the running game, um, and I've been around Coach Dillingham at Memphis, at Florida State, so I know what his expectations are. So that part been easy for me. Just your background, do you feel coach, like as three or four years here, there's been a lot of continuity at running back, uh, as I'm sure you know, with C.J. Averdell and Travis Dye. Now in spring, it really feels like the carries are, are up for grabs. With the guys that you have on the roster, how do you feel like they kind of complement each other? Hey, like I always tell people, them things will sort, them, will sort themselves out. For me, the standard here, when I first got here, was to reach out to Coach Campbell and to reach out to every one of those backs because that's the standard. And it's my job to get that room back to that standard. You know, I know there's other running back coaches that came after Coach Campbell, but to me, from 1983 to 2016, that guy, he the standard. And if there's anybody I want to model myself after, it's Coach Campbell. And he would text me, I would text him, I would text some of the, the running backs that have been here to let them know, man, I respect what y'all done here. And it's on me to get that room back to the standard. You mentioned Coach Campbell and, and past running backs. When you've guys, you've got guys like LaMichael James and DeAnthony Thomas coming back to the spring game. What does that mean for you? How excited are you to kind of get with them and talk to them and I mean, work with them? It means a lot. You know, I talk to both of them. I talk to LaMichael. I talk to uh, KB, Keon Bunner. I talk to DeAnthony. These guys and give me their numbers. You know, I talk to Ruben Drones. Uh, our, uh, Jeremiah Johnson, um, Dino Phil, who, who's here. All these guys, I done reached out to these guys. LeGarrette Blunt. They done gave me all the numbers these guys done talk to and be able to try to build a relationship with. Because, like I said, for me, this business is all about relationships. And, like I said, you know, if I was to leave here tomorrow, I want guys to know, man, I cared about my kids. I'm passionate about football. You know, every day I take this job um, as of, you know, I'm the best developer of the running back position. I take that personal when I see other coaches say that. Hell, I don't even wrote coaches like, oh, hey, thank you for that motivation. When they say, well, I got the best developer. No, you don't. It's me, but I want that attitude to rub off on my kids. It's not an ego thing, it's just being competitive. And I, and I plan on being the best developer of the position, not just running backs on the field, but men off the field. I feel like you have a special appreciation for the, the walk-ons as a walk-on running back, because this spring you started, I think, with two scholarship guys, and you have a bunch of them out there. Do you feel like you have a special appreciation for what they, they offer the program? Well, for me, I, I don't have walk-ons in my room. Okay. I treat all, all my guys, get it. All of them on scholarship to me. 
because I'm a coach all on the same. I said the same thing when I was at WKU. If you ever go back and hear an interview them, I don't have walk-ons in my room because all of them going to get it from me. I'm going to pour into each and every one. I'm not going to sell no kids short because they're here for me to serve them. Whether they got financial aid or whether they don't, I don't care. I'm a coach. Coach, can you talk Last about question. the feeling that you know you have when you watch any of your guys in the NFL? Like Antonio Gibson scored, scored three touchdowns on a big Thanksgiving game. What is that feeling for you when you watch him have such a big moment? Well, I ain't feel good about that one because he scored a touchdown. I get my Cowboys. So I went. <laughs> so I went. So I'm happy. I'm happy for those guys. But as much as those guys, as I pour in those guys, those five guys, they know the journey. They pour into me. They motivate. They motivate me. Like I tell everybody, you know. I wasn't a running back coach at Memphis. That wasn't my title. But I never cared myself in anything else but that I, so I could prepare for this moment. And I poured into those young men. It didn't matter the title. Titles are what? They're giving. You know, I worked my butt off. Those kids know. So guess what I ended up earning from them in the end? I earned their respect and their love. So that was important to me, and I'm happy for those guys. And that's why I stay in contact with them. Love each and every one of them.